We're here at IMS in Boston, the new Mass Convention Center, this week of June. I'm Sherry Hess of AWR, booth 1418. We're going to be showing a number of partner demonstrations of our software, working with hardware and other people's software, so come on and take a look. Hi, Sherry Hess of AWR. I'm here in the Rodian Schwartz booth talking with Mark Vandenbosch of NMDG. We're going to learn more about his behavioral modeling approach, also known as S-functions. Can you scope out your particular behavioral modeling approach for the audience? So yeah, indeed, we do have S-function approach, which uh, are modeling devices uh, using network analyzers from uh, Roden Schwartz. And these models can be connected into simulation tools, like the simulation tools from uh, AWR. The S-functions are, in fact, what the S-parameters are for linear devices. The S-functions are working for active components, mainly focusing on the nonlinear behavior of these uh, devices. And we made the S-functions a natural extension of the S-parameters. S-parameters are very well known uh, by RF engineers. And we actually learned already how these S-parameters can be dependent on the bias of components. And in such a way, in fact, the S-parameter is already a function. It's a function of the DC. Now, we actually make it depending upon other kind of large signal excitations. This is, for example, the input signal that can drive the device into a nonlinear area. We can have the load that's driving the device into a nonlinear area. And we are able to measure the S parameters while driving these components into their nonlinear operating point. Um, the nice thing is, though, that uh, you can collect these S parameters for different kind of large signal operating points, collect them into a table, make sure that you're doing the mathematical right things, and then feed that information into your simulation tool. And there, by the proper interpolations, you actually can predict the nonlinear behavior of a device. Now, it's not a miracle, these, these S functions. Uh, the fact is, once you're talking about nonlinear things, it gets pretty complicated, because one of the properties that engineers love is superposition. And superposition is related to linear behavior, unfortunately. Once nonlinear superposition gone. So we need to introduce assumptions related to the device to, stay, to be able to manage still this behavior of that device. And that's actually where we are still making a kind of a linear superposition principle of the device, but under large signal conditions. So that's the kind of uh, S-function approach that, that we are providing today on the uh, Roden Schwartz Network Analyzer. Thank you. As we understand it, are there any particular frequency range or power levels that S functions are ideal for? Uh, well, actually, yes, functions are totally independent of frequency range and power level. It's like S parameters. You can extract, as soon as the device is linear, you can extract S parameters. You can do this for any type of frequency. So the S functions also, they are applicable for any type of power level. They're applicable for any type of frequency. There are some mathematical assumptions that we make, but it has nothing to do with power level and frequency range. The main area or the target area is power amplifier design. Uh, basically, you want to characterize your power amplifiers with somewhere a behavioral model to actually be able to simulate these things in a simulation tool in combination with other devices. And if you look at the assumptions that we make to create these S functions, to make them valid, um, it actually is most uh, oriented towards power amplifiers. Uh, we think, though, if, if we can limit the scope of the area of um, the operating range, so a transistor always has a mode of operation, if we can limit that, we also think actually that we can do this for transistors. And actually at the show, at IMS, we are demonstrating this on a transistor level and not on an amplifier level. But we think that the main target is really the amplifier design. So Mark, the particular key strengths or differentiators for S-functions versus alternative behavioral modeling approaches, could you elaborate on that, please? Well, one of the, the key advantages is that it is, uh, we are able to formulate it as a natural extension of S-parameters. And I think we can make it for engineers pretty simple to understand the S-functions. I think that's one, one advantage, because it's very important to understand actually these, these limitations that you put uh, into the model. Uh, also, the way we are describing it uh, allows us in the future to look at other applications than basically power amplifier uh, design applications and uh, make it more general uh, for cases where people are concerned, for example, about spurious coming into your uh, device. 
like, uh, well, you have a, G a cell phone and uh, at a certain moment you can have interacting signals from another cell phone coming in. Usually they are pretty small, but you want to know what that interaction is with basically the main signals that are going on in the components. And we think that these models are going to be able to uh, capture that, that behavior. Today we are not doing that. In the commercial solution we are basically focusing ourselves on the harmonics. But we see the path for the future and the mathematics is there. So we know how to do that part. Okay. Appreciate the explanation. Any final remarks? Yeah, well, um, I think that basically the, the fact that, that, that behavioral models are becoming more and more um, available is, is really going to, to uh, enable engineers what they were able to do with S parameters today, that they are going to be able to do the similar things as they are doing with S parameters in the simulation tool. So I think it's going to open totally new horizons uh, in the coming years. Great. Okay, so we'll arrange to have a demonstration. Yes, indeed. We'll uh, do a demonstration and then uh, you get some ideas about how, in fact, the nonlinear characterization works and how we can actually extract the models uh, from these nonlinear characterizations. Thank you. Okay, thank you.